Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel if you are a existing subscriber. So right here you're looking at the Guitar Kit World Kit Guitar with the Flame Maple Top. And it's a veneer, so you know it's not a solid top, it is a veneer. But it's a very, very good looking veneer. It's got some real nice striping in it. And uh, yeah, so this is the Gold Burst or Yellow Burst. Uh, it's a little bit more on the gold side than the yellow side, but that's fine. Uh, the neck is going to have a little bit of the inlay work that I did on it, uh, being as a yellow type gold. Hopefully it matches up when I put the two together and uh, looks pretty good. So far the top has got its last pour. I did two pours of the Ultra Epoxy Resin Clear on there. and. I don't think I have to do any level sanding to this top or, or anything. Actually, it, it came out really nice. I did a over pour, which means that uh, the cavities for the pickups are filled. And the neck pocket is got some epoxy resin in it as well. So what I did is I covered up the holes for the neck, uh, the screws for a hole, for uh, the screws to hold the neck. Uh, I covered those up with some masking tape so they won't get filled up with epoxy and uh yeah i gotta plug it when i do the back of it i gotta plug those holes up from the uh, back so they don't drip down to the front and uh still gives me a guide to where um i can follow the guide just perfect with the mill when i start drilling out the holes and stuff now because i ended up uh filling the pickup cavity and a little bit of the neck pockets i'm going to have to use the router to route things out again and i have the uh templates for the pickups and i have a fender template for telecaster and strat i've already matched it up with the top of this thing and this thing matches perfectly with a strat styled uh neck pocket and I've got the bearing uh, bits that I can run inside there and just follow the template and cut that out perfect. Just have to be careful of my depth to make sure that I don't go too far down. So here's what the fingerboard looks like right now or fretboard, whichever one you want to call it. After I did my routing, which you guys already seen uh, photos of that and previous videos of this guitar. Uh, I'm not too happy with the outcome of it. Now, after I did the pouring of the epoxy resins, let that set and dry really good uh, for quite a few days. It says on this Ultra that uh, was like 72 hours or something that this stuff is supposed to be cured to work with. I kind of waited a little bit longer than that. And uh, I wanted to get it to shrink a little bit, which epoxy does shrink a little bit, and see what's going to happen as far as when I go and use the radius block, the 12 inch radius block to uh, radius everything out and smooth the, the fretboard completely out uh, and make everything even to see if maybe some of the uh, epoxy resin shrunk a little bit too much and I was gonna have to do a little bit more of a fill in those areas, which everything worked out pretty good. And you kind of see that some of the frets uh, slots have a little bit of epoxy in them as well. I'm not too crazy about the way this looks. Um, others are, are kind of liking it a lot. And I'm hoping when the frets go inside here that it's gonna look better than what it does now. That's not a fret saw. That's a fret saw. All right, so this kind of changed my outlook of things after installing the frets. To me, now it looks uh, a little bit better than what it did before. You know, it was missing something, and I guess the frets is what it was. So now I've got everything carved in, cut in, poured in, and slotted, and pushed and plucked or whatever you want to call it as far as the frets go uh now when i plucked these frets out they did cut the tang a little bit on each side of the fretboard so you wouldn't get any fret sprout coming out on the edge of the fretboard so i did the same thing with these when i installed these frets and i also dressed the edges of the fretboard where i took some of the uh fretboard dust and filled in the slots from cutting them a little bit of crazy glue or CA glue and uh, 
sand that down flush so the edges of the fretboard you know are nice and clean and look neat and this should not have any type of fret sprouting at all that new fret saw that I have um, is very sharp and it cut through this epoxy and whatever this fretboard is made out of pretty damn good compared to uh, the other saw that I have I think the other saw was used quite a bit and uh, that I got with a bunch of tools that I bought and parts that I bought online anyways frets went in pretty good nice and tight I use a CA glue when anytime I do a fret job especially if I have to pluck and refret I'll use CA glue to make sure that they are secured and not going to be raising lifting or anything else they are Stumax radius uh, jumbo frets and uh, this has got a 12 inch radius on this neck and the frets match up perfect with it so it's already been dressed crowned polished and level level well, level first and then uh crown and then polishing yeah make sure i get that straight and i'm not really done with the fretboard yet i still have to put a few coats of clear on the fretboard itself i found a couple of spots that uh, i had to fill because there was like a little like a pinhole in the fretboard and in a couple of spots so i had to uh fill it with a little bit of ca glue file it down sand it flush and i found one of them i didn't really uh, sand flush very well so i have to go and take care of that the headstock is masked off because i'm going to do a epoxy pour on that next so in this photo with the frets installed i uh, hit it with the black light just to kind of see what it's going to look like and yeah i'm i'm liking this a lot better and like I said, the headstock is all masked off right now and ready to be epoxied. All right, so I'm going to start with epoxying the headstock. Right there is a small bubble level. And what you need to do is kind of get that headstock or whatever surface that you're going to apply the epoxy resin to leveled in all directions. Otherwise, whatever high, high area is, is going to be a thinner coating compared to the lower because that's you know this stuff is self-leveling it's all going to move to the lower end so i'm checking both directions and i found that the neck is just a little bit off on one side that could be my countertop and a piece of paper piece of sandpaper uh 1500 grit sandpaper was just enough to put underneath the heel and correct that problem so checking it again looks good give myself the thumbs up all right so here I'm going to start with the mixing of the resin and the hardener but first I need to get something to put them in to keep them separate and measured I use those plastic solo cups I think they're called and just put a mark evenly on both and that'll give me my line for my level and uh, I can start pouring the epoxy resins now the hardener is a lot thinner than the resin is. The resin on this stuff is thicker than honey. It's, it's thicker than cold honey. If you ever try to kind of get cold honey out of a container, it's, it's pretty hard, pretty thick, and really doesn't want to come out very easily. It's kind of like what the resin is with this stuff here. This Ultra is some really nice stuff. Um, it is a 50-50 mix. The outcome as far as applying it and curing and everything else is a lot better than what I was using before for epoxy resin, that I have to say. Um, it seems like this stuff is a lot more harder and it seems like it's a lot more durable than the other stuff I was using. And uh, yeah, so got to be careful pouring this inside of the cup because if you pour too much because it doesn't level very quick like water would be it's very easy to put you know an extra glob inside the cup and now you have to try to put some back because you pour too much or you're just going to have to do and waste you know what you got so the nice thing about these containers is they have a plastic gasket that goes inside of the opening of the containers uh, a lot better than cardboard or foil with paper behind it to seal up the containers otherwise this stuff will kind of turn yellow on you if uh, oxygen if it's stored and oxygen gets inside of them this will start having a little bit of a yellow tint to it so I've got the 
resin poured. Now I'm going to start using the hardener and this stuff pours a little bit more easier uh, real quick and I kind of uh, had to put a little bit back after I poured into the cup. All right, so it's time to add the hardener to the resin. Now they recommend you do it this way because the hardener is thinner and it'll be easier to get out of whatever container you put it in. That's why having mixing cups is a lot better to do this stuff because everything is marked to how much you need to put in. Um, getting some of those paint mixing cups works out pretty good. The only problem with the paint mixing cups, if you want to keep them, it's kind of a pain in the ass to wash them out after you mix up your uh, epoxy in them. It just, you know, even with lacquer thinner, it wants to turn into just like a gooey mess and yeah. So it's just easier to measure up a couple of cups like this and then throw away the cup. Now you want to make sure that you get as much of the uh, hardener out of the cup as possible. That way you're not uh, skimping on one compared to the other because if you don't have equal amounts, you're going to run into a little bit of issues when it dries. So now is the fun part, mixing this stuff. And I'm not going to make you watch or even fast forward or 10 minutes into uh, mixing this because that's how long it took me to get this stuff to mixed together really good as you can see that it's pretty thick as far as uh, trying to mix it now I have uh, two pieces of basically tongue compressor popsicle stick whatever you want to call it I have it glued together so I'm able to kind of mix it in there without having to bust my ass uh, doing it because this stuff does make your wrist hurt a little bit after trying to mix it, especially 10 minutes non-stop so let's go on to the next part so this is always the fun part, pouring the epoxy. Now as you can see that the epoxy resin has kind of like a milky look to it. That's due to the resin and the hardener mixed together and also when you're mixing it you're adding a lot of air bubbles to it so that's a good portion of that right there as well. And as you pour you can see that you're also pouring out a lot of the air bubbles uh, onto the surface or the project that you're pouring the epoxy on. Not a big deal, you know, using lighter or a torch will end up removing it. In this case though, uh, after I applied the epoxy resin to it using the lighter that I normally would use for, you know, removing air bubbles and stuff, uh, didn't quite work very well with this epoxy. Again, this stuff is a lot thicker than what I've normally used and, uh, you know, I'm come to find out this stuff is actually a lot more durable as well. So I'm making sure everything is getting coated, including filling the remainder part of the tuner holes that I plugged up, because I'm gonna have a nice flat surface um, after I drill out the holes. So the under part of the headstock, the holes will still be there as a guide for the drill to, I guess, drill through the epoxy on the top and uh, have the holes exactly where they're supposed to be instead of having to kind of like guess and measure a little bit to make sure that uh, I'm in the right spot with the drill bit and not off to one side a little bit or even just a hair off. This is going to guarantee me to be right where I need to be when I insert the drill in the hole to drill out the uh, epoxy on the top. So even though this is leveled, I'm still using a, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a glue spreader or an epoxy spreader. I've got several of these that I use. I just let them let the epoxy dry on them and then I'll end up peeling off. The, the epoxy really doesn't stick to this stuff, the plastic on these very well. But even though this is self-leveling, where the tape is, where the uh, truss rod cover would go, it will build up a wall. So it'll be raised a little bit in that area and I'm trying to avoid sanding and buffing as possible. And uh, so I wanted to kind of like get that all out and, and you know make sure that uh, there won't be no buildup. So I found out using the lighter that I normally would use doing epoxy resin just takes too friggin long to end up uh, removing the bubbles out of this epoxy. Again this stuff is a lot thicker than what I'm normally using. Um, yeah so I ended up kind of giving up with the lighter torch or whatever you want to call it and uh, going to get the big guns out. 
So the torch was the way to go with this. If this stuff is just way too thick to end up using something like a lighter or the type of torch that I was using as far as, uh, you know, it's still a lighter either way, but it just takes too long. And the regular propane torch works out really, really good to remove the bubbles quickly. And uh, yeah, so all I gotta do is just watch and make sure that there's no more bubbles pop up. All right, so Everybody knows that when you purchase a kick guitar, unless it has options that you could choose from, and some kick guitar companies do do this, to where you have options to upgrade from your mediocre hardware and electronics to something better, but you pay a bigger price for that. In this case, there isn't that option. So in a lot of kick guitars that I put together and I build, or, or however you want to call it, I replace everything. All the hardware, all electronics gets replaced with better stuff instead of using what mediocre stuff they come with. It's just the nature of the beast as far as kick guitars go. So what I ended up doing is I already showed in a previous video the Goto locking tuners that I picked up. These are three and three. They are not um, straggle. These should be perfect for what I needed for on this headstock. I ended up picking up a roller bridge and I ended up picking up a uh, tailpiece, brand new. I believe the hardware that's on this guitar is black uh, I want chrome. One other thing that I picked up that's not necessary for this guitar, just to add to my tool collection, is I ended up doing some work on a, uh, a headstock replacing tuners that had the pins on the back of it instead of having a screw to lock it in place and found how much of a pain in the ass it is to locate and drill out the uh, pins for the tuner so it locks the tuner in place. So I ended up picking up a tool, I don't know if you can see that, that uh, it's a little pin drilling jig that is going to help me with that. It is set up for basically like all kinds of different uh, setups for tuners that have the pins. This goes into the hole, this locks this in place, and you have the guides over here to drill out your pinholes, and it comes with two different size drill bits. Kind of nice, and they also threw in another one of those brushes, which I'm probably not gonna use. Now this is not really gonna be too much of an unboxing because I've already opened this box up, um, and I had a peanut mess all over here, so I kind of like, so getting a good laugh out of it, I ended up putting it back like this and, you know, whatever. So for this guitar here, this kit, I went with the Jazz Humbucker and a JB Seymour Duncans. Um, I picked these guys up brand new and uh, yeah. So let me go ahead and, where did my razor blade go? Let me open one of these up. So I believe these are the same thing that I ended up using a while back in another kit that I built. Um, so I believe these have the wiring to where I can I can do some little tricks and stuff with the pickups get them like I've turned it into you know single coils and, and whatnot yep these are so yeah that works out great so I'm gonna have more options to have uh, push and pull pots on here to make these guys you know do whatever I want instead of just being a standard pick up I could turn them into a single coil or reverse polarity on them whatever so yeah this is some of the things that I've got for this guitar again you know some of this is just tools that I'm going to be using and then the rest of it is actually parts for this guitar so I'm going to dump out these pecking peanuts because they're driving me nuts I can't stand them so that's about it you guys take it easy have a good one um this ultra epoxy resin that I've been using it, it's not difficult to use it just uh is a little bit more of uh mixing a little bit more uh thicker than what the stuff i was using before i feel that it's very durable and it would be great uh that stuff would be really good for doing a, a countertop or tabletop or just you know some type of furniture with it to give it a nice gloss look it seems like this stuff here as far as the bubbles go the way it lays out um, the gloss finish on it. It just seems like it's a little bit better than what I was using and uh, It lays out a lot smoother too. 72 hour driving dry uh, driving Drying time with this stuff and uh, it seems like it cures a little bit faster than that But I just give it it's more time than what uh, 
it says to give um, just to be on the safe side. So yeah, next will be probably coating the back with the epoxy resin. I don't know if I'm gonna do that on camera or not, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how that works out. All right, you guys, take it easy, have a good one. Thanks for watching, be safe out there.